hit you, they'll chop their feet and just drive them back. And when we drive them back, we want to take that steering wheel and eventually we want to take that steering wheel and shove that shoulder pad up in the guy's throat. Demons of the army don't like it. The shoulder pads up in here. It stops with their aggressiveness. We do some other things stops with their aggressiveness and how we attack our blocks. I'll show you that in a later. We'll get in the four point stance, same concept. We'll work on punch, fit into them, and just shuffle your feet. Then we'll progress to where we'll have the defender start fighting side to side. And what we're working on when we go side to side, we're working on can you stay locked up with them, can you move your feet and hold You know, hands on the steering wheel, is this holding? Probably. But when you, when you stop moving your feet and start doing this, it is holding. So we have to get those kids to understand, lock up, and you've got to stay in, your, in his framework with your hands. You gotta keep your feet running and stand and walk. This is where we kind of emphasize some of that stuff, especially with our younger kids. Everything we do is out of a four point stance. That's old school. You know, so you guys, uh, you know, get a three point stance. You know, you can go talk about the 1640, Leo's on a three point. Uh, sometimes you guys talk about the two point. Everything we do is out of a four point. Everything. Everybody's in a four point stance. What we're looking for in a four-point stance, we want their feet pointed uh, straight ahead, these bodies and shoulders, maybe a little bit tighter, especially if you're a guard. Our guards have to pull. And what we do with our guards, we'll take, we'll convert them back. It may not be your best running back, but we'll drop them down and let them play a guard. This year we're pretty fortunate. We had a guard who's about 185, 190 pounds. He ran a 4 8 he was our strong side guard. Our back side guard was 155 pounds and ran 4 9. Those were our two offensive linemen. And those guys will have them cheek their feet in a little bit, their stance, so they can never pull the run, what they do, what they do. Uh, ways to evenly distribute it. We don't want to have too much weight going forward, not too much leaning back. <coughs> it's not really a problem with us leaning back, we don't roll ball. So most of our kids get that aggressiveness, that attack mode. The problem we have is to get too much weight going forward, so their first step to kind of understand that is, is in between their body frame because they're trying to gather their weight. And that's, that's too much weight going forward. We want the weight equally distributed so they can be able to pull right and left and go. It seems meticulous, but in the spring, when we have a little downtime, we're going to do stands for about 10 minutes. Monday, we're going to start doing football outside, and that's what we're going to do for 10 minutes while it's blind. We're just going to sit there, we're just going to lie on the stance, check their feet, check their hands, make sure they're not going to wipe forward, okay, back in line, next group, come forward. We're going to do that for 10 minutes. It's going to seem meticulous because those guys have been doing this for seven years now. But it's something you need to rep and do. We use the spring to take care of a lot of that. Once we get the fall, everything's going fast pace, we don't have time to do those things. <laughs> but we will check the stance in the spring or uh, we want to as many places we can on the ground. Tail is not too high. I'll show you some film later. You see some of our fatter kids, yeah, they get their butts up too high. If their butts up high, their first step's going to be high. They're going to be up. Because they're going to have to gather their weights. We want their tails down. We want a flat back. That's what we try to emphasize. A flat back. On your fingertips, so you can be able to get out of your shins. These get at 90 degrees or more. We do take pride in our stance. We keep it the same length every time. Whether we pull, whether we're pass throwing, whether we're firing off, whether we're trying to uh, trap, our stance is the same and our alignment is the same. You know, Coach, uh, Coach Malia was talking about, you know, one, two, three, I don't know. Our alignment is going to be the same no matter what we do. Our guards and toes are even with the heels in the center and his hands are down. Everybody else sits their hands even with the guard's hands. If your hands are even, we're going to get a nice, even, straight row. We're watching film Friday night after games. The head coach, that's the first thing he'll say, I'm going to look like a V. Or well, we're not straight in our line. And that's the thing we're working on in practice that we, we have the coach designated to watch our line when we do our drills. I'll show you here with you. Every position is the same stance, no matter who it is, other than the quarterback. Now, our back coach does give them to their backs a little bit of freedom to get the three point if they want. But every kid is going to be in a four point stance, or at least taught a four point stance. 
That way we can convert a back to a guard. Or we can take a tackle and move him in the back here. We can take a tight end and let him go play tailback. Doesn't matter. Everybody's going to be taught the same technique in their stance. This is a picture of our stance. This is the line. The bad thing about this is our tight end here, his heel's a little too far off the ground. Our tight end is 6'7. I don't know how many of y'all have done that before. It's a tough coach with six seven kid, especially to stay low and far off like we do. Everybody else you see, our tackle by next two heels are there. All our hands are doing there. Everything's in good stance. You look at his back. Nice and flat, right there, nice and flat back there. This is what we like to see in our stances. Okay? Good stance right here. See how tight we are the ball? That's what we want. We want to be in your face right now. All of our plays are designed to be real fast hitting kind of plays. We want to get in your face right now and then get by you right now and gain some yards. Alright, I see these are a little warm up. Uh, this is all the stretching things we do. The cool thing about this, we'll line up by position and we'll spread out along the field. We've got about eight, nine coaches that will take their position groups and do that. I coach the strong side. I'll have all my strong side players. I'll have them somewhere between 10 to 16 kids, freshmen through senior, with me. The good thing about that is it gets a little rapport between me and the kids. We get, to, we get to talk to each other while we're stretching. I can kind of coach them up by and tell them something. We can do that. The OC's got the backs. All the starting backfield, quarterback, everybody. So we can tell them to do, to do things specific to them. Quick side coach got the quick side coach. <laughs> quick side kids. Secondary coach has all the secondary kids. So we can do drills specific to them as we need to. We'll do just a quick stretching routine. Then we do a start. This is an agility type period. And again, I can do some of these things, but if I, if I need to do something, we need to work on our pulls. If we're, if we're popping up and then running, I'll work, I'll get over there, just line them out, we'll work on stepping flat and going. This is a warm up period. We'll take about 15 minutes to do this. Now, we'll do some of this in the period. We'll do the stretching part and the agility during the class period. We'll take about 10 minutes to do it in the class period. That's done. We come back after school. We'll do the neck and shoulders, and then right here at the bottom is the key. We'll do a shot block, a scramble block, and an angle block. I'll work all my blocks in a warm-up period. That's it. This is our individual time. The thing about that is every coach is doing the same exact drills at every station. So every player we have, quarterback, receiver, no matter what you're doing, you're getting the same blocking techniques here. It's coached the same way. It's, it's related to the same way. So if, if I have to pull a receiver over to play tackle for me, we can do that. Like to, we can do that. This little number four is tackling. You know, whatever. I'll show the tackling drills. We just do form tackling. We'll do a little open field tackle. And, you know, the head coach is the DC. He calls the defense. He kind of gets a little irritated at that. So every once in a while, we'll tackle. Most of my, my kids are the strong side. I get all the strong side kids are all the bigger, fatter kids. They're not going to play defense for us. So I'll do a little bit of tackling with them and we'll move on. Now, the other coaches, we have a defense attack coach, so they'll take the, the primary starters on defense with him. He can work more about tackling than I do. Uh, I'm going to break down each of our little individual warm up drills we do now. This is shot, this is our first one. Everything we do, guys, comes off of a shot. When we say shot, all we're wanting our, our players to do is get a good stance. We'll say hit. We want you to take your screws of your helmet and put it on the, the belt of the defensive, defensive player across from Now, we're doing our stretching. We'll line up in three lines. We'll stretch. We'll do our agilities. We'll break into three lines. Do agilities for about 10 yards. Then we'll do next. We'll partner up. So you'll have five to eight sets of partners just lined out on the line. And we usually will try to match up players with about the same ability. I won't have any varsity kids go against freshmen. You know, that's, that's just, that just doesn't need to happen. But I'll have juniors go against seniors, sophomores go against freshmen, sophomores against sophomores. You know, I just line them out by position and they'll go against each other. The first one we do is shot. And we'll have a player the offensive player get a four-point stance. The defensive player is going to get down a linebacker position and kind of sit here and just kind of catch him. And all we want him to do is to put our screws on his belt buckle right now. Just shot him to the right now. The key things we're looking for, we're looking for explosion, we're looking for the hand of the belt, how low they come on, flat back. Not really following through, we're just laying out on the ground. We do this in the spring, we will back the defender off. We literally just jump in the ground. 
We're just looking to see how far they jump out. We just want to get on the defender right now. This is the, this is the basis for everything we do with shot. We'll tell our kids, hey, you've got to get a better shot. You go shot into that guy right now, then run your feet. you got to go, you've got to shot that linebacker. We want a good pop right now on him. And we're at the belt of the team on, we're down low. Everything we do is low. Everything we do is emphasize being low. We don't play with no big kids. We play with quick kids. We want to get in get a defender's waist as quick as we can. Next thing we do is we do shot and follow. So we'll do shot. We'll line up the partners. Coach will walk down the line. Hit, 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 hit. He'll turn around and come back in the other direction. The other player goes. It takes like two minutes. Next thing we do is shot and follow. We're partnered up still. Shot. Boom, pop into his waist, and now we're on our feet. Okay? What we're looking for is low, flat back, quick feet. These are the things we're emphasis on. Shot, we want low, low pop into his waistband. We want quick feet, flat back, we're going to the whistle. Then we finish. We finish, we'll either explode and punch the guy out and throw out on him, or we'll cut the ball. And the receivers will take theirs and they'll cut the ball. And what they'll do is, boom, they'll say hit, boom, shot, 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 whistle blows, and they're laying out. They're punching, laying out. It's finishing. We're finishing the drill. <coughs> Everything we do, we emphasize finishing. We want to finish at the defender. We want to let them know, yeah, we just got after you, we're going to come back at the next play. Everything we do, we finish. We cut the ball, like I said, the receiver comes to the on. Because they can cut a lot down when you open pop up after your leg. Scramble. So everybody does shot and follow. Walk down the line, come back. Next thing we do is we scramble. Take the defender, shade him one way or the other. Right or left. Just shade him on the line. This is your reach block. This is your reach block. So we work shot, shot and follow, which is a drive block. Now we're working the reach block. This is still warm up. Everything we've done is still warm up. Defender shaded. We're looking for so we call it a scoop step. You know, it's a zone step, that's all it is. We're working for a 45 degree step, pop in the defender, you shot that defender, you stop this charge. You, st you literally stop this charge. That's one of the reasons why we crowd the ball. You know, Coach was talking earlier about having a chance to let those kids work for themselves through, let the defenders climb and everything. We want to get on before they get a chance to get out of their stance. We preach when the snap down. We preach with the snap down. The defender's taking one step, we're on him right now. All of our kids are not going big, but all of our kids are going fast. Slow this kid on our offensive line this year at 5 2. Here's our tackles. My strong tackle is 250 pounds at 5 2. He's down to a 5 flat now. We raced against our quarterback the other day and beat him to a 4. Our quarterback's going to run 5 1. So our strong tackle, he ran 100 one time at JV this year at track. Look, you know, watch a 250 pound kid run down the track running 10 yards, you know, 12 nine hundred is pretty funny. But he's a little tiny receiver guy. But we want our kids, all those defenders, right now. The shot, boom, you stop this charge. Now to scramble what we want, we want them to get their butts around. So they shot in the defender. He shaded here, they shot in the defender. We want just this. We just want their butt in the hole, working around, and we're working driving. Now the defender, when we're doing this, and you have warm up, he's just going to stand there. I'll show you some variations here in a second. We just want the defender to stand there. We're working off into line taking. We're walking, not working as defensive, trying to get away from the race block. We're just working line taking. We're working that quick butt in the ball turn. And again, finish the whistle. Uh, angle blocks, the next thing we do is so we've done base, race block. Now we're doing angle block, which is your down block. Defender shaded that same direction. The first time we'll do this, we'll preach stepping flat, get your head in front, and cut him off. Because we'll face a lot of big teams that they think, okay, you're going to trade and stop the sweeps. Okay, fine. So we're going to preach lock down, cut him off, get your head in front, take your, your upfield hand, put on his hand, and shove him down. That's all, that's all we'll do. Then we'll get teams that want to reach. So they'll back the defender off a little bit. So we'll work now against the readers. Say, okay, you have a reader. We're aiming for the knee of his neck now. We're going to put guard our face mask to the knee of his neck, hand on the back, and just shove it in. Again, same concept. We want to blow. We want a good shot. And we're going to finish with the whistle. Again, everything we do, we finish. We finish with the whistle. They do some 
some variations we can do. And, you know, we can do this again, so just by position, position uh, specific. Sometimes our back coach will, will block the defender off a little bit and simulate our backs having to go block the strong safety. You know, sometimes we'll do that. We'll back, we'll back our defenders off and we have to go get linebacker now, right? We can go live. We started going live early because we had a lot of young kids start girls. We had uh, two sophomores and three juniors starting for us up front. So we had to go live a little bit with those kids because none of them had varsity experience. They had to go a little aggressive to us. We told the defender, okay, you try to move his ass out. And here we go, boom. We're going live. Again, this is all warm up. This is the first 10, 15 minutes of practice. Um, in scramble, you can have the defender try to fight outside. So now we're trying to reach him, but he's trying to fight outside, so we're just staying locked up with him, just running with him, trying to get our butts outside. Uh, angle lock, you can have the defender try to spin out. You know, we'll work back, I'll work out my tackles. After they get pretty proficient with walking down and with cutting off the penetrator, with, with uh, getting the reader, they will start working on spinning out. When they spin out, we just want to readjust, refocus, and lock up with them and drive them. Um, again, any other, any other drills you can think of that, guys, feel free to do. You know, our head coach has been doing this a long time. He's okay with anything we do as long as it's, it makes us better. And it's not wasting time. And that's a good thing about it. He's a good head coach like that. He's not really controlling the way they're He's not going to come over and hover over us, making sure that we're doing everything exactly that way. He's just Done. All three done, we do whatever we want to. Type of drills, again, you get four lock every day. Our kids have to go both ways. We're 3A school. We're starting to get numbers now. I love to know where Liberty Hill is. We're north side of Austin. We're starting to get pretty decent numbers as far as 3A go. We had 130 kids out this year. We're probably about 150 out next year. At least we signed up. So we're getting some decent numbers. We, we probably get two for 10. We're kind of toying with that idea. But my first year at Liberty Hill, we had 32 on Mars, but we had to go both ways. We had to at least have a couple of kids go both ways. So our kids had to get offense and defense training. So we're getting all this form blocking and form blocking and form tackling every day in practice. Every day, Monday through Wednesday, we're getting form blocking. Uh, athletic period. We'll pad up in our athletic period. Our athletic period is four periods in a day. We'll pad up. Now, I know some teams will go shells, they'll go, you know, shorts and shoulder pads. We go full pads. Our kids just expect it. Every once in a while, when you kick the game, we'll say, okay, shorts and shoulder pads. I think it's a luxury. We got in the playoffs this year. We had a movie in through California this year. He's like, coach, we have four games today. You can wear shorts if you want to. Oh, they're all loving it. They all wear shorts. Of course, they all hated it. So we started doing slim cage, and now they are getting their knees all straight down. That's okay. And our kids get tough, and they'll figure it out. We'll go slim cage in practice every day in our athletic period, especially in the preseason before we start playing. So they're getting sled work and getting cage work every day, everybody, everybody. Now the receivers won't get the cage work, but they'll get the sled work. They'll get the sled work. So everybody's getting the same thing we're doing. What we'll do is we'll take about seven and a half minutes on the sled, seven and a half minutes in the cage, and we'll flip. Our athletic period will have our JVs and we varsity. We have a separate freshman athletic period. They, everybody just like the cage. Um, all line of receivers go to the cage. During the cage, their backs are going down working some pass and pitch. When I say pass, it's just pitch. They're working and pitch. If you've ever seen us play, we do a pitch. We'll fake a power and we'll do a, a toss, like a chest pass toss outside the ground running. It's called 228. So our backs are going to run 228. In 228, the halfback has to go chop the outside guy. So we'll go get a dummy and a patch over there and chop the people when they're doing their stuff while we're doing our cage work. We go to the sled, everybody goes to the sled. Quarterbacks included. So everybody's getting sled work. Uh, cage. What we do with the cage, guys, we have, it's, it's kind of like one of those trap shoots you have, of course, because we didn't have a lot of money. We kind of built our own. They're about, they're about uh, 15 foot wide and probably about four, uh, about three yards deep, man, I said, about, about uh, two yards deep. And what we'll do is we have boards going through this. We have two of those. We have three boards in each one. We're just working on speed, staying low, and getting off. We'll, we'll line up in the shields. We'll get the defender shields, and they'll sit at the end of the cage, and we're working on, we do right foot lead. We're just working on how fast can you get to that pad right now. It's all speed. We'll do 
the cage in the spring. Uh, Coach, we were going to say you were talking about not doing the cage in the spring. We'll do the cage in the spring. We're going to get some of that uh, air conditioner, foam insulation you put on the outside. We're going we're gonna to get some. We're going to put it on the outside of our cage with zip ties so they won't bang their head. We're doing cage in the spring. We're doing cage in the spring. And what we're working on in the spring, how fast can you get through? What we'll do in the spring, we'll put those tumbling mats about five yards away. They should have to go throw on that mat. How fast can you get to the mat? And we'll make it a competition. Say, okay, who's going to get the mat first? Go, hey, John got the mat first. All right, who's going to get next? Hey, Steve got this time. All right. You know, it, it makes it fun for the kids. They want to go do this. They want to go get that mat. Who can get the mat first? On this, it's all speed. Even in pads, it's all speed. We're hitting shields. So if you're not really going to get a good fit into a shield, you're not going to get good drives. But you can get some drive. You know that defender's going to be backing up. Just kind of take it easy. We're working on how fast can you get on that guy and take him out of here. It's all speed. How quick can we get on him? We'll do right foot knee, left foot knee. It's our base block. We'll do our scoop. It's kind of hard. You know, you guys in the zone block, it's kind of hard. We'll take that step and run it forward. Now you're just running through. So really, it's just that first step. You know. And our kids, they, they kind of make fun of us. Just kind of scoop. We're not scooping this guy. Okay, it's a scoop step and drop. Then we pull. When we pull, work here, we're gonna put it. We're gonna put our heels in with the board. Now, I know some people, you know, I do this. When I first learned how to pull, you always thought to pull that arm back and go, and I was gonna. We still like kids to run out of your stance. As fast as you can get down that board, you're getting down that board. You know, we want them down the board. We want them flat for now. We'll teach them how to climb up with the whole layer. Right now, we want them flat down the board. We don't care about if they throw that arm back and go. We just want them, how fast can you get down that board right now? Some kids cross over. We'll get on a little bit of crossing over. As you cross over, you're going to be out of that line. We want to run right now. How fast can you get down that line? Then uh, we'll walk them up and then in the boards, and we'll just shot. Lay out in the middle of the bear Or we're going to just scramble the bear crawl into the uh, A lot of times we'll lose our foot, our footing, the block, and what we're wanting is how aggressive can you be? You keep your screws in that defender's crotch and you just keep getting after it. And I got some video I did of ICBMT with my lineman during track practice. And uh, you know, I tell you, my center, he slips and falls down. You see him still trying to scramble, trying to stay on the guy. You know, this is where you teach that stuff. Then we'll sweep. When we sweep, we'll have uh, the center and the tackles and the ends just working right foot lead, just going through. But our guards will back out, we'll have them pull. And our guards will be here and here. We'll put a shield right here, we'll put a shield right here. And this play side guard's gonna pull and kick out. Back side guard will have to pull, get around the cage and seal this linebacker right here. And we'll kind of move the linebackers around. And we kind of emphasize some of our sweeps when we do this. Again, this is a seven minute period we're getting five, six reps in the cage. Boom, 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 boom. How fast can we do this? It's all speed. Uh, sled, this is another big emphasis. This, we do a sled a little different than what I've always learned. I kind of like how we do this. You know, sled, we line out, coach most of us over shot, boom. Okay, we'll do it again, hit, boom, you shot again. The third one, you shot, and you drop. You're driving, you're driving, you're driving. And coach is behind us with the sled, blows the whistle, we stop. They pop up and chop their feet. He gives them a direction. All right? This guy here is going to drive the sled in this direction. He's got to pull around the sled and go. He's got to throw downfield with this dummy. We'll have guys holding those big yellow stand up dummies about 10 yards away. This works our downfield blocks. We emphasize a lot of downfield blocking. We, we expect our kids to get downfield and throw with people. We teach throwing at people. You know, coach talk about throwing linebackers. And how we teach it, if I'm throwing at this linebacker, this safety down here, I'm going to take my opposite side arm and I'm going to throw it across his body, across his body over here, and then you're going to roll into the defender. Why do we want to throw up high? Because we want the defender to have to react to you. And then we roll in and try to have to keep getting playing off of you. Now, we may not always get the defender doing that, but what you force the defender to do is to slow himself down for a step or two. And like I said, our plays are so fast hitting, we're gone. We're biting. We're biting. 
That big 6'7 tight end that you have, he didn't do a very good job of wanting to get on the ground. It's a long way from 6'7 to get on the ground. So he wasn't doing very often. You know, he, he was going to rise and he didn't think he needed to do it. And you watch some of our other kids go down the field. Our big 250 tackle, he'll throw himself out there. Even if they're just throwing themselves on the ground at somebody in an area, they're going to make that defender kind of sidestep. You do that once or twice in a ball game, guys. That free safety, he's going to be more worried about the backside receiver coming up to cut him than going over here and making a tackle on the swing. I promise you. I promise you. You know, that's one thing about our, our offense. We're going to force those other teams to play physical football for the fourth quarter. DBs don't like to do that. They really don't like to do that. They say they do, they'll come get you once, and they won't get you off ball game. Most of them won't. But I like this. We do this, like I said, one, he's going W1, two, he's going W2, three, he's going three, four, he's going four, five, he's going five. If he goes the other direction, same concept. Five, he's going that dummy still. Four, he's going to his dummy. Three, he's still going the middle one, two, he's going around this way, one's going around this way. Like I said, at least all the receivers, tight ends, all the linemen are getting sled at least twice a week. It's like, hey, the backs are coming to us at least one day on a sled. All of that, quarterbacks, halfbacks, tailbacks, everybody. So they're getting slept. They're, everybody is expecting to get down and get dirty in our office. This is how we do this. Now, we do practice. This is our actual practice period of time. I put this in nice and bold. This is all we get for individual in a regular season. Five to ten minutes. That's it. Here, cool. Five to ten minutes. You know, you just have to you'll see for ten. Because this is what we want to do. Everything we do is team oriented. Everything we do is team. So you got to do a lot of team coaching on the run. And I'll explain how we get it. We do individual drills. We do some possible as we do. Sometimes we'll go half time. I'll take the strong side. I'll work strong side specific plays. Most of the time I'm working right here. Double teams. Um, we run a power. That's our base play. 234. We're going to run 234. It's a U stop. That's our just our base little power play. So I have to learn a combination. I can work a double team with my tackle, my guard, and my tackle, my, my tight end. And we'll do that for 10 minutes, at least early on. And what I want to have, we'll have a post guy and a drive guy. Post me in, the guy who's covered. And his job is just to shot in that defender, stop his charge, and try to try to run your feet and stay on him. We want to stop his charge. The, the drive man is the one who's coming down. He's attacking the play side shoulder. We want to push him down inside, okay, and make a nice little crease. Our fullback is taught to, to hug the double team. He's taking a step at the inside of the hip of the tackle, and he's hugging that double team, wherever that double team is. Hopefully the double team's on the field inside, so we're hugging that double team nice and tight. Now, if your forces are running a little wider, or a tight end attack like the double team, he's still taking a path at that tackle's hip, and now he's running right around the tackle. He's looking for that tackle with us, and he's going to rob that tackle backside. We do we do with the tight end and tackle. The tight end has to go with combo down. And what we teach him to do is, like I was talking about yesterday, we want, if we're combo, we don't want the outside hand to come into play. Because you can't, you can't punch this man with both hands and then turn and try to pick up the linebacker. It just can't happen. It's too fast, you'll never get there. So we'll teach him just to half press here. Boom, get his shoulders shoving down, hold his charge, and allow the tackle to overtake him, to scramble him. And in the end, to work up the linebacker. But that's how we do those things. We'll get time to do that. We we'll work combos, we'll work some power series, or a G series, or ISO. We'll go with the weak side, we'll go with the weak side ISO. We can do some cage work, and I'll show you what we can do in a minute. We can do real with you. Early on, like in the spring, we're going to work stand for 10 minutes Monday. We'll go in a cage and then set up. Do cage for about 10 minutes, and we're going to come outside the cage and just talk rules for about 10 to 15 minutes. Do a lot of stuff in the spring. Touch up a little bit in the, in the fall when you're in shorts. But once we put pads on, we're going. We're going. Tackles, I can take the tackles and work individuals. You know, we watch the scrimmage film and say, look, you know, you tackle 
early on we'll teach double team. Early on we'll teach double team. And once we get a little more proficient in things, then we can work combo. When, our, when we double team, it's the max responsibility to pick up a linebacker. If we combo, that's just a little extra we can get. But we have to secure the down line on the power, and that's what I tell the kids. We gotta get double team first. We gotta get better double team. G-series, G-series nothing but an angle blocks and a trap. Angle block, angle block, trap, get gap. And again, we'll go this live in the G-series some, but it will go this live too. So we've got maybe 20 minutes of live action practice. Page work, the horse is down field. If you do a bad job getting down field, good page, you can put a defender here, you'll play side and get up and the work from scraping underneath that defender to go down field and throw it down. We'll put it down about 10, 15 yards away, so they gotta run and go throw. What we'll work in there is our backside, backside cutoff and going down field a block. So again, it's specific what we do. We'll double team something, we pop it up too much. Alright, let's go to the cage. We'll work up the team. We'll do this lot. We'll do this lot. In, the, in a period, we're going just to shoot. Trap. We don't do this real often, but every once in a while, we trap and pull up. We'll go in the cage. Okay, we're going to trap live. We'll put a defense down there in the line. And we'll shot bear ball some line. We're popping up too much, especially on the goal line. Alright, let's go bear ball. Go get at it. Tackles. Like I said, when we do traps, this path is the butt of that down line. You know, most people we see, I don't know how many defenses y'all see, we'll see a variety of defenses. But most people we see play the even front defense. They'll put, a, they'll put a, somebody over the guard. We're telling this tackle, if I've got to go get the linebacker inside, my path is that hip of that tackle when he's down. I'm stepping at him right now. What's a tackle going to do nine times out of ten? He's at least taking a step forward. He vacates, go forward. Now I'm tied off his butt, and I'm coming to get that linebacker. Because most people, when they play us and they see track, They'll have the linebackers still quick. So we've got to tell our tackles to come flat as you can off that tackle, but block that linebacker. What we'll do sometimes too, if he's not getting there or if he's bubbling around, we'll tell him to come, grab the butt of the tackle, and pull yourself into the hole tight, tight on this to cut that linebacker off. So we're literally about to hit that tackle or that air line and pull ourselves into the hole. We have to go flat without a linebacker. Now, if we go flat, linebacker moves. That's easy, we can just readjust and go, go chase it. That's fine. The toughest thing for us is the linebackers are filling the hole fast on traps, and we're not there. If he's too quick, he can come to track. I'll go over that in a second. We gotta go fight to get him off. Uh, we work angle blocking down line, which we feel that we can do that. Pass pro, that's, I threw this on here, make me feel good, but I promise you we do this maybe once. I did it this year for that attack, and we, we tell him to pass in. Now you pass it, that, that five technique, stay on him. You know, shot him, you'll stay on him, and then just bury him. Oh, no, no, no. He was a soft the first parts of the game. He shot him, and was driving down the field five yards, tackle slid off, and there he is at 10 yards. Stand there watching the play. Ah, thank you. So you got two downfield penalties, I got my butt shoes. So we work this once. Uh, trap, if we're trapping too far, once, once. We tell our guard, our guys we trap, we want to, our aiming path is where the ball was before the play. We want to be in the hole. We want to climb into the hole. I'll go over that in a second. We'll work this some, just a little bit with the tackles, but they do the trap also. We'll do this a lot with the guards. Guard to centers, centers is working on reaching the blunt. We'll get a lot of blunts too. People, people think we get a lot of blunts to stop us, so they'll line up these nice and tight ones. We'll have to reach them, so they'll have to reach the blunt. Centers a lot of times will do this while we take tackles and guards and work up. You know, our head coach, like I said, he's a DC, but he's also a center. And he's coached off the line before, so he loves. He doesn't have any self varsity responsibilities. He kind of floats around the offensive practice and does quality control. I said, hey, coach, how'd you like to take the centers and go work one? Well, he loved it. He loved working the centers. Now he feels like he's part of our offense. It's a great day. Go do it, coach. Now we can work on our other guys, especially if we have a lot of young kids. You know, so now we can work on our young kids. He can go coach the centers. Guards, we'll work sweet pack, especially in the spring, we'll start working sweet pack. We'll put the runs out. If we preach an X, our kick out guards are going to run the X. He's going to run the X. He's going to pull, we want him in the hole tight, and then turn his hips to the hole. So, what we want out of him, he's going to run, climb into the hole, and then he's going to wheel out outside and kick out. Kick out tight. We want 
the hole or shove himself down into the hole. So if we're at the field on him, he can't spin out on us. We gotta hold up. Uh, backside of us going down the field, what we'll do, I'll show you in a second. Again, we're running 12 traps. The first offense, 12 traps for the second offense. We do it in a 15 minute period. 24 plays in a 15 minute period. I promise you, we get it done. It's boom, 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 boom. A right, 332 on one. A right, 332 on one. A right, 332 on two. A right, 332 on quick. Left, we're switching. We're going now. Our kids are running around, hustling, and going. A lot of that work that has been established in the offseason and other things we do. So our kids know they're going to bust their tail in this. But once they're done, they're done. We can do a little break while they're in the second So we're doing all this stuff. We can block three different defenses every day. We, we sit down Sunday, we get about two. 12 different defenses we might see. We line up in a slot that nobody else does. You know, everybody else now is all spread two by two, the trips, everything. We don't see that. We don't do that, so we're not going to see that stuff. So we have to kind of guess where the defense is going to be. So we'll guess about 10 to 12 defenses and we'll block those defenses during the week. This is our track alignment. These big blue things, you know, big blue sand dummies. We have three of those, we'll line those out. And we'll run the track over here. This is the end responsibility to go cut this down. We're going to go cut this down, excuse me. This tackle, he's coming this way, cut that down. So these guys are chopping down the field. Everybody else is running the sweep. I'm a strong side coach, so I'm responsible for my strong side kids. I'm watching these three guys during this, this period. If one does wrong, I'll correct him. This coach is watching these three guys. The coach is watching the backs. He's watching our alignment. Remember I said earlier, we can watch the alignment, make sure we're not looking like a beat. This is Doc. He's going to the back scope. This is the OC, this is the back scope. He's watching linemen and he keeps the backfield and looks to make sure we run our face. They're not running our face. All right, let's do it again. This coach here, he's our receiver's coach. Defensive money, I think. Anyways, he's looking, he's sensing the defense and he's making sure our kids go downfield with fun. That's his job. That's what he does. So he feel very much the same. We're out of team, going in shields, everything's real fast paced. Now, our kids get a pretty good workout doing this, especially our guards. They're running 12 sweeps in about an 8 to 10 minute period. You know, they're, they're busting their tails and they're going. Our backs are busting their tails and they're going. But everything's full speed. If we don't run full speed, like I said, our head coach is, is old school. He is uh, he's an old school guy. He's our quality control coach. If we're not going fast enough, no blow a whistle, we'll start the whole shebang over again. We'll go back over, we'll start stretching again. We'll start to practice all over again. You don't want to do that, you have to cut out practice somewhere else and make sure we're under eight hours. But we'll start to practice again. You do that once or twice, you get their attention real fast. They don't want to bust their tail to do this. We probably did it once this year. We did it after the first drill. We went to the goal line on Wednesday. Our kids were kind of messing around. Blue whistle. Back started again, and that was the end problem. That was probably the third week. When we just beat Burnett, it was a big battle. Kids, for the first time, we were beat Burnett since you now time again. And they're all excited. They thought they were the best in the world. We went to our practice again, and they, they settled down after that. We did a good job. Again, speed is the emphasis on our tracks and sweeps, guys. We don't stay in our blocks for long. We don't have the big kids. We don't have the best blocking kids in the world. We couldn't zone block them. You know, you guys do a great job as well. You guys get pretty good kids. You get to stay on the down line pretty well. You get the linebackers as quick as you can. We don't have that type of athlete. We have the athletes that are about 180, 190 pounds or maybe 240 that are a little slow. So we have to get on people and just stay on for a second or two while we're past them. Now, we expect you to get on to stay on for two or three seconds. And we preach to stay on and finish with the whistle blows. We don't always get it. We, we preach it, no one's get it. We understand it, it's kind of an acceptability we have when we're coaching. And we emphasize the kids, you gotta finish, you gotta stay on for the whistle blows, you know, you didn't block well, so on and so forth. We understand as coaches, we're not gonna get there. But you know, as long as our kids understand, they have to stay on the whistle. We're going. Again, backside tackle, playside tackle, we're looking for angles on the traps and switch. You gotta cut off any kind of penetration you might see. Uh, the, the end sometimes left the top penetration. We're working on him staying on and doing his job. 
working on centers getting into the hole, excuse me, the guards getting into the hole, kicking out the gloves in the hole. We'll work on that X. We'll, we'll sometimes charge them too. Uh, backfield's got to be, got to keep their uh, ball takes. The backside's got to be able to cut. We preach that every day. They're going to be good. Again, we're running. We're, we got about four main sweeps we do. Right, left, right, 12 sweeps, 8 to 10 minute period. Twos get in there. They were going to make sure. So we're getting a lot of, a lot of residents. Same alignment as trap, same concept as trap. You know, you're working various things in the same field. We still have those dummies out there. We're still going to cut them. We'll, we'll keep those dummies out there when we go full team. And again, if you're, if you're scooping or whatever, you better go get that dummy, not the one of us to do it again. Uh, some variations. We'll start the linebackers. We'll walk them up into the hole. We'll have them come as soon as it goes. We'll tell them to read back sometimes. See that every once in a while. So we'll do a different variation of what we do. We'll force the outside linebackers. We'll sometimes go on our sweeps. If we get double ones, we can't pull that uh, tap it in our face. We'll go ahead and go on, block down in the center, block down in the play side guard. The fullback now becomes our kick out. And we'll preach him doing the same path as the kick out guard. He'll have to do the run the S also. So he has to be taught to do that. Uh, we'll work our false keys this time. Sometimes we'll go drop the shields and go lock. We only did that once this year. Like I said, we had a young group. We did it one time with them just so they could feel a live sweep action. We don't do this very often. We want to save as much as we can. Team. Oh, I have two time. minutes now. Alright. Team. We do two. We all huddle up in team just so we can simulate practice again in the huddle and break them down. But again, you see our practice. I gave a practice schedule in there. We'll run about 25, 26 plays a team in 20 minutes. So it's. This hole gets a play, this hole gets the same play. As soon as that first hole breaks out, runs the play, as soon as that whistle blows, that second hole is breaking, they're getting out there doing this as first hole as possible back in the hub. We're calling play with them, they go. As soon as they're back over here, we're calling play with them. So it's boom, 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 boom. It's real fast pace, it's real, real going. If you ever see our practices, you can see how we do this. Our, our kids are, our defense is still out of shields. We're not going live anymore. We're still in shields. Uh, Change the fronts around as well. I'll show you some of the things. A, B, C, D, all those different fronts we might see on a practice schedule. So we've got to change things around. Again, that's the speed. One thing that you also, I give you a sample of my JV one. We do a written test. We do a lot of rules. Our rules are simple. You know, I, you know Coach was talking earlier about the tight end, this rule change. Our rules will stay the same. 234, our power play, our guards rule is over, inside. Somebody's over me, I'm blocking. If there's nobody over me, I'm blocking inside. Tackle school is, is over or inside. If nobody's over me, I'm helping out inside. I'm double team. Everybody else is scoop, scoop downfield or scoop to number five. The tight end play goes away. His rule is number six. Number six is the free safety. You've got to go cut the free safety. Our rules are real simple. On traps, our tackle school rule is most dangerous linebacker. We're probably going to change it to play side linebacker. Linebacker your side. But it's real simple. He didn't have to worry about where I gotta go anything. He's gotta go get that linebacker right now. He's gotta go get the most dangerous linebacker. Everything's open. We take paths, we take angles. We don't worry about where you line up because we see crazy stuff anyway, so we're going paths. So on our written test, we expect to know a line call. You know, are you seeing a three, a two, or one? I mean, what's your rule? For every play we run. This is a sample one. If JV, I'm gonna give uh, eight plays a page. Varsity, we need 10 plays a page. And we'll get 7 to 10 pages on varsity. So they got to do, you know, sometimes 50, sometimes 100 plays for our offense versus whatever defense we might see. And do this. Uh, I put this last thing on their blocking page. We got this, our, our, we got this from the coach, got it from the coach, and it's a good deal. We do this, we watch film of kids. Okay, why'd you miss your block? You know, did you not know your assignment? Did I not teach you that correctly? Did I not teach you the technique correctly? So you know how to do your assignment, you know your rule, you know how to do it, and why you didn't get it done. You know, so the kid has kind of, there's a little emphasis placed on him. Now if he says, coach, you didn't tell me how to do it, okay, fine, Monday, we're going out, we're going to teach you how to do this. We're going to learn this a little bit better. But these are some ways to do this. Every kid, every one of our line will get this. Every, actually, everybody will get this. We'll hand this out to every kid. Uh, last thing, hold the rope, guys. It's kind of the same thing here. Hold the rope. Yeah, it, it means you've got to hang on. If, so, if your buddy's hanging down on that cliff, you've got to hang on that rope as far as you can to help them keep them alive. It's a team concept. It's a team building concept. We do it everything we do. We start the off season. I'm not doing it. Okay. <laughs> if you ever come and watch our off season, guys, we, you know, we get about 55 minutes off season. 
period, if we start, they get two minutes after the bell rings to be dressed, and we're busting tails for 50 to 53 minutes. And it's everything, and then we'll, we'll break out and do a little square at the end, and we'll preach these things. We expect them to hold rope for each other. We expect them to hang on to that rope for everybody, to, you know, to, to want to be part of the team. Because everything we do is a team concept. And, you know, especially it's fourth and one, our offense, you, get, you better hold rope, you better find a way to get your block taken care of so we can get this done. Again, it's all established in the offseason. You, know, you guys can run whatever offense you run or whatever they think you want to run. You know what I know. As long as your kids believe it, if you bust their tails, they get after you. You're going to be competitive. You may not win state championships, but you're going to be competitive. You know, that, that's half of that. Um, a little fast. I let my contact number, guys. If you want to call me, you want to email me, or if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, I have some video. We go break down the show some video, kind of show you how to throw blocks and kind of break down things. If you have any questions about the place we're on, I went fast, also explain everything. If anybody has any questions, feel free to ask me. I just want to make sure I cover them all. Guys, we're going to take a 10 minute break. And, and the thing we want with our shot, like we talked about, is and this is this kid's a sophomore. He's gonna we, he was our quick tackle. We're moving into our strong end, so he's gonna be our our strong end on our offense. You know, it's a, he's our best blocker. His head butt's a little high. Like I said, this is track practice, and then we're in t-shirts and shorts. But we're, we want his butt down a little bit more. And all we want to do in the spring is just how can he just shoot out? Yeah. You know, how far can he shoot out? Boom. Just how far can he extend his arms? This this guy's butt's way too high. You know, he, he was gonna play he was tactical. This is our center. You can see our center here. Rewind it. This is our center, and you know, he's got a pretty good stance. The reason why he's he's uh, got two different colored shoes on, he actually has one foot that's two inches longer than the other one, or one leg's two inches longer than the other one. It's a little crazy. It's hard to teach him discus. But look, flat back, good stance, flat back, you know, he's just gonna the same way. I like a little more cleats on the ground. But again, we're just wanting a good extension, just going out. Boom. He's a little high, but you know he comes out. This is my tackle. It's my starting tackle. Butt's a little high, you know, but he comes through. Shot follows same concept. This first one's going to be our uh, fullback, the back end of our fullback coming. Like maybe he played. I thought. Now oh, there we go. And what we want to shot follow, we're a little high. That's why we're okay about doing it in the spring, because we get real high, you know. We're aiming it up for the chest instead of aiming for where we like it. We like it more in here. But if any like, see flat back, feet a little wide, running, running, run your feet quick. You know, again, we're all too high, but that's the bad thing about doing the spring. And what I did is I showed some video clips of us doing this and if you uh, have any questions or anything, just let me know. Is there a voice from Salina? You see this? This is the four This is. Let me pause it. That is that is every play from Salina. I promise you. I realize it's on the one yard line, but this is this is it. You, if we're on a fifty. It wouldn't be any different than this. Eleven guys. Have you seen Salina? You know. Uh, what I wanted to look at is a shot by these guys right here. This is their all all American state dude, you know, the big hosses going to Oklahoma State. He is very good. We didn't block him very well, all of mine. Most people didn't. But what we want to do is just get into him. We just and our center does a great job too. We just want to down here on the goal line, this is another shot. Just how quick can you get on him and do this? And you watch, we stop his charge. Now he flows out here and he hits the fullback as he's running through the, the end zone. But we stop his attacking charge. We get him kind of halted and going back. So we're off the ball quick. See how we stop him and he kind of hustles him down. You see the end zone view of it. He's still getting blown up. He's still getting blown up. I mean, when you watch him, he still gets blown back. Now he makes it, he gets in on the tackle, but it's here. It's we're in the end zone. It's three yards. It's three yards, and that's all we want. It's three yards. It's three yards and Clyde does. Now we don't do a good job on the play side one, but he of course misses and it's uh it's good. I'm just going to run these. If you have any questions, do the same concept here. And we match up a little better with these cats. But you watch our guard. These guys just shoot into them. You know, we do. We do a good job just getting into them, stop their charge, and run their feet, and get them off the ball. And that's what we're wanting. We want to get on those D line before they can take a step. And you see that guard. He was into that that 
the three tech before he took a step. Three tech takes one step and we're into him right now. He didn't have a chance to react. <coughs> this, again, same deal. Watch the strong side here. So they took one step and we're on them. And then they were, they're flowing. And we're past them in the hole. And our strong end does a good scramble right here. He does a good job of kicking this guy out, get his butt in the hole, wheeling him out. Yeah, see, he wheels out the linebacker. So that's just a C gap base dive. It's all C back, but it's actually a lead, lead, lead block. Right, it's all it is. Lead it's, a, it's, a, lead, yeah. it's basically it's lead. It, it's coming to the power or lead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's either fullback lead right here, or it's fullback power where he kicks this guy out. And just yeah. determined by where we get the down lineman. Now, right here, he's a five. We might call him a five. Yeah. If we call him a five, he's going to combo. This, this tight end is going to combo up to this linebacker. Everybody else is going to be manned up, or, or he's, he should be trying to get downfield to cut that guy, and he's trying downfield to get to cut this free safety sitting over here. But if, if he's comboing up, that means he's going to kick out. He heard, probably heard a five call, and he has a five, so that means he's got to go kick this end out right now. You see, he went to a bad job of the halfback because he didn't get his butt in the hole and he let him slide in. But we get the combo, well, I didn't really get the combo, but, but he made him adjust his path enough and we're past him. This is 236. That's 236. This is That's basically the difference between the two players. It's, it's the only difference between the two 234 players. 234 is against front, 236 well, usually against an odd front lot. No, it's not turn, always. If but, we get a five, we're going to run 236. Yeah. If we get a four, depending upon who he is, I mean, he's a big, tough yeah. four, we can't block him. Yeah. We'll go we'll go 236 where we can cobble down. But if, if we get a four, we'd like to run 234 and just get a tackle on him and go inside yeah. and just wall all down and kick him out and run right in this little hole. Yeah. We want him to run the ball. We want to roll it right off his butt. Now if it's if he's a five, we're gonna run his butt outside. If it's a four, if the three are inside, we're gonna run real tight. <coughs> this is getting some what they would do as the odd front, they get this little five three stack looking thing. And, and what they do is they'll, uh, you know, they, they, they screw themselves by alignment with personnel. See our tight end? We run 236 or 234 here. Tight end scoops out that this guy right here. We're blocking down, so we get a three, so we should get a double team and a combo. We just wall him in the linebacker, we're getting five yards. You know? We didn't block that linebacker very well, but he's making the tackle at five yards. Yeah. First down. He's made a false step. Exactly. Time. Well, they're so tight, if we could get those yeah. guys into them. We're getting a push, same deal here. The, the halfback picks him up, because that's his man, but he does it late. But, but again, this is their stud linebacker. He makes a tackle here. You know, we're getting five yards out of the deal. Now he's making a tackle, yeah. we got six yards. Yeah. And again, all we're doing is just getting on him real fast and trying to get by him. You know, same deal, they make, they make a pile, Okay, five yards. That's the first down. The, the center didn't do a good job on the nose there. He's supposed to, you need to try to scoop him a little better. <clears throat> I put this one on. I don't know why I put this one on. This is our G. We run a little G series every once in a while. And uh, we're getting, what you should get out of that is angle, angle, angle. And he's going to trap out this guy outside. Uh, we went unbalanced too. We went a little unbalanced this year, right in the playoffs, trying to try to mess with some people. This is actually our quick tackle. So he's blocking down this guy. We're blocking down this guy. He should kick out somebody forcing. Well, they don't have anybody forcing. So he's leading up on that linebacker there. Now this guy right now is unblocked. You know, we're, he's going to try to get to him. He's unblocked. If he scrapes outside, by the time we get all this trash, he may make a tackle about right here. If he makes a tackle, but he gets walled off in trash, and here we go. He has 10 yards. Like I said, we, we went a little in mouse this year. We did it against Crockett because if they ran a 5-3. They never would adjust to it. They said they would just sit there. We would just still G them the left and right. Um, we're thinking we're 234 here. Again, you get the double team here. We get a good, good push. The center, this, this tackle, this is the hardest block on 234. Is teach, this, is why you're, this is why we said your strong end has to be a good blocker coach. He's got to be able to get his butt. He's got to be able to hook a seven. Yeah. If he can't hook a seven, you better find somebody else who can. Yeah. 
got to get inside of him. He's got to get inside of him. Now, it doesn't have to be a big block. It doesn't have to take him down here, but he's just got to get position on him inside. Yeah, just get your butt in the hole. And be able to hold him off. Right. You know? See, like that right there. Yeah. That's a great job right there. Now, he doesn't stay on it, doesn't finish the block. We probably got on him for, we probably gave him a minus in film and told him that he should have stayed on the block longer. And but he did what he needed to do. He did what he needed to do. Now, he did it do it perfect? No. So, you know, we expect perfection, but, you know, risk reward, we kind of understand you're not always going to get perfection. You're going to get, you're going to get, if you get half of it, you're still doing a good job. Again, down the goal line, this is his gravy down here. We should get a good shot out of these cats. See, the tackle slate coming off yeah. and let the defender get into them a little bit. He was always a little slow getting off the ball. <clears throat> that guy gets low. Guy gets low and gets into him before yeah. he can get into him, into the defender. But, you know, again, we got enough crease. You know, Sweeney, this was a 4-3 team. What we did with them, because I used to coach at Sweeney a long time ago. And we ran a fourth with the same defense while I was there. And, and they would play the two, and they'd play these backers, and he's taught to read the tackle. So if you get a base block, he's tried, he's taught to come fill. So on 234, we told the guard, you lock up with the two, and you come straight up as linebackers. We base this linebacker. You watch what happens. This is ugly. Well, it's good for us, it's pretty cool. Watch the tackle. <laughs> he buries him. I mean, I just I don't get it. I mean, that's like two and a nine. It's two and a nine. Two and a nine. We, right. We what they wanted to do is actually it's almost a two. It's a one and a nine. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. one and a six. He's supposed to be playing a six. Yeah, he's an eight. A yeah, one and a six. What they wanted to do, and they did a good job of defending us. They really yeah. did. They held us to about 370 yards of offense, and they did a good job. What they like to do is that they wanted to take away our trap. Oh, okay. And, and make cause problems for us on our sweeps. And they did because they got these two guys in double ones, and they're a lot bigger than our guards. So we had trouble moving these guys, especially when we were on the track. Yeah. This kid right here is their all-state linebacker. He's going to TCU. Yeah. And he made a lot of plays. And he was real good. We had trouble blocking him. But we knew we could, if we could haul him off, wall him down, we could block this cat. This, this halfback was supposed to look at this guy when he comes through, but he outruns the play. Because we'd run a play earlier and he made a tackle out here, so we thought, okay, I gotta scrape outside and get the tackle now. So this halfback does a bad job of not really finding him. We get a cutback and we're gone. But he ran himself out of the way. Because we'd run, we'd, we'd hit it so much off tackle right. that we went. Here's Crockett, good looking kids, good looking kids. Watch this shot right here. The defender didn't get out of his stance. You yeah. can see it in the end zone, even better. That's why I put this one on. He didn't get out of his stance. Barely. Yeah. And we're three yards in the end zone touchdown. Same deal here. This kid, well, this kid was a big child. When he's 88, he was a big boy. Yeah. That one right there made the tackle. It was good. That's 46. <coughs> Again, we got on him before he got out of the stance. You know, and that's what we want out of our kids. Got a tight guard. We're, we're tight in the line of scrimmage, yeah. all nice and flat. He's a little deep. We can probably be up a little bit, but again, you know, it's just base power. We should, you know, he's a one. He's gonna come off as linebacker now. And there we go. Didn't get a good block on I guess he did get the end. That was a corner they were gonna tackle. These guys did a good job defending us too. This is Yo. See, they wanted to stop our power. Watch this. this is a good block by this guy right here, if I remember right. So he gets into him. Yeah. Fullback right along, because we, we called 236, but they, they shifted. So we blocked 234, right? But he, he does a good job of getting him outside. We get the double team push. We I mean, the hole was inside, but you know, we just, you know, a little miscommunication. They did a good job of running. This is Hutto, the hippopotamine. Yeah. They run it even on us. They, they, they walk those linebackers in ones. These are threes. Poor job by the tackle. He shot into them and just totally missed. So it yeah. falls down. Yeah. But he's going so far inside that, here we go. In the crease. He took himself out of the play. Yeah.
still base split and just walk down right. there. Right? That's it. Three, That's it. Threes will walk their yeah. two backers in the A gap. I put this one in because of, of Curly. Mr. Curly, number one, like top trash. Yeah, he's a heck of an athlete. He is. He can back it up, I promise you. Yeah, he can. If yeah. everybody's manned up, we're running 234, we'll man up. You know, we, we would like to get a double team somewhere. Yeah. Because of the type of kids we have. But if, if you get a, a two, and you'll see this, Coach, we get a two, five, and a nine. We get a two, five, nine, we'll combo down. But if we have a two, a three, and a nine, or a one, a three, and a nine, he's going to block a three, he's going to take the one, or the, the two, and he's going to kick out this this end. We're still going to run this crease right here. So we still have a blocker with yeah. the half back. Yeah. And of course, we lay this free safety out. He's free safety. He lays him out. There's not a lot of loss there. Yeah. He's hated him since junior high or something, elementary school. They yeah. compete against each other. He's still talk trash. He can back it up, though. I promise you. He's good. He was a good one. Yeah. He's getting run over. <laughs> After getting run over. Well, TCU, right. you know. get an athlete, I promise oh, yeah. you. <laughs> he, he can do a lot of things for them. They sit back in their base split now, just walk the free up. So we block the free with the tackle because he's comboing inside. The two, the two gets picked up by the guard. The, the tackle, this is bad end zone. This two, he's going to go up to this linebacker now. He's a free safety. And there we go. We're in the end zone. How often do y'all run 234, 236? We run at least at least 10 to 15 times a game. We're going to run 234, 236. Sub varsity level, we're going to run it a ton. And, yeah. and we can run it out of quick. You know, we normally do it on two. Yeah. And we talk about two. We, right. we go two in this deep top motion because we're faking 228 with this yeah. cat. <coughs> we can run out of quick. We just line the tail back up right now. Like right here, we're in, we call this formation T. T, we're taking this tail back and walking him out here to the split end. So we got dubbed two wides. Well, yeah. actually, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's supposed to be two wides. He's supposed to be out wide. Yeah. We took him out here, put him out here on the edge already to take a corner out of the play. We're still going on 234. You know, he could still run it. Um, you can run out. I've seen Pua. They do it at what they call open. They'll take this tight end and they'll walk him out, and they'll still run the play out open because they get the double team with the down line and the halfback will kick out this end now. Yeah. And you just run in there. You got to get that combo, but you got to do it. Right. Um, but we're gonna run two thirty four to the world standstill, especially because we have this guy coming back. This fullback. Yeah. He's our strongest. He's one of our stronger kids in our program Is that too. Allman. Allman kid. Yeah. Pretty fast, too. He is fast. Well, he's about a four seven kid. Uh, I just saw y'all's district track results. So yeah, I mean, he runs decent he's, speed. Yeah, he's decent. He he runs like a twelve flat forty, maybe yeah. or twelve five hundred, maybe. Yeah. This was early in the season. See the tackle just shot into that down lineman. Uh -huh. Didn't do a whole lot to him, but just got into his way long enough for us to get past him. You know, he could run his feet and stayed on a little longer. The, tag, the end was trying to work down the linebacker, but they, they, they played a seven. They played like a four yeah. and a seven. So we just walled them all down and ran, ran two thirty six outside of it. Do y'all uh, question on, do y'all want to keep off that? Yes. Key? Yes. How do y'all call that? Keep. Just keep? Keep. Just 234 keep. 234 keep? Yeah. The, the, the pitch, what do y'all, is that 238? 228. 228. 228. 228. Our, our back, our three is, our three back is our full back. Okay. Our two back is our tail back. So we're going to run. Excuse me, 228 is the, the, the tailback. Okay. Um, we'll, we, don't, we don't audible. The only audible we'll do is 234 to 36. That's it. Everything else we're running. We're going to run a play. If it doesn't work, okay, we'll line up and run the ball again next time. Yeah. If it does work, we'll, you're going to see that play again. And, or, you know, we may, we may run the play. You may have lined up in a different defense against us, and we may come back and run the same play again. Um, we're going to run our plays and we're just going to call them. And, and if you stop us, then you stop us. If you don't, then you don't. And the two hand, how, how often do y'all run the two handed pitch off of that 228? Uh, a game. About five, uh -huh. if that much. We got better with it as the year went along because we ran 234 better. So we started running 228 a little bit more. Um, also, <coughs> as we got into the district and got into the playoffs, we got play against people that hadn't seen us. So they didn't know how to defend the pitch very well. So yeah. we run the pitch a little bit better. You know, early in the season, we're playing Burnett, who's played us forever. We're playing Wimberley, who's played us forever. And 
Cuero played us you know, in the playoffs, so they had seen it before and they had seen what we do with it. So they played a little bit better than everybody else. So we, didn't, we ran 234, ran some other things. And then, of course, we got into, into the playoff, into the season, into the district. We played against people who had never seen it before, so we can run 228 a lot. Um, got to be pretty effective. We, we threw a pass on 228 because our, our tailback was our quarterback as a junior. So we would pitch it to him, and he'd run about three steps set up and throw it to our swing man who'd be wide open because nobody would defend him. Because they're too worried about him cutting. Too worried about him running and taking it off. Yeah. Scramble, again, the defender's just standing still. We're working on just getting the hips around. You know, the feet are slipping because we're at track practice. You know, watch, this is what I'm talking about my center. Yeah, just. He just stayed on. Watch it. Yeah, he's tenacious. He's yeah. just tenacious, you know, and, and he, got, he got to do that a lot better as the season went along. You know, he slips and falls down. He's going to find a way to get it done, so he's going to start crawling into him, you know, and our tackle, that's my big tackle, and does it. <coughs> Some of these plays are repeated. i got to fire my video guy. It's me. But this is this one you watch him. This is 228, or 234, excuse me. You can see, see how he, get that, he got position, scramble that in. He scrambles this in and out. So he's got his butt in the hole, you know. Don't get a real big block out of the halfback, but he got in the way long enough for us to get by him. Same deal here. We're scrambling this cat right here. He's got his butt in the hole. Now he could have ran his feet a little quicker and got a little better position, but you know we're, we're buying long enough to do this. Now like I said that one's repeated already. We don't get the real good double team there, but we get a good scramble by the end. And, you know, halfback does a good job of leaning up in there and going. Oh, the backside guy. Yeah, you see that? Oh, he just rips that guy's knee. Yeah. And it was, it was bad. It was a bad shot at yeah. it. But what that, you do that once. Oh, and yeah, and they're looking for it. And they're looking for you. Now, we yeah. don't preach that. I mean, we kind of got on the kid for cutting. He yeah. actually clipped him. Yeah. 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 We didn't take away his aggressiveness. We liked the aggressiveness he did. And like I said, that, that, that free safety now, instead of we're going to play over here, he's going to start looking backside. Yeah, we, you know, my, my background is in beer blocking the hole. Uh -huh. and, and, you know, look, we're running option, we're running beer away. I mean, it's very similar. You know, you, your backside, if you're a backside tackle, you're getting down the field. Right. And, and we didn't have them cut, and we always had to peel backs. Right. Where you just you get 15 yards downfield as fast as you can, and then you turn back into flow mm -hmm. and just start murdering people. And like you said, you know, they start looking. Oh, the it. defenders are looking for that instead of chasing the ball. They're exactly, worried, they're, they're worried about you coming. They're worried about somebody getting them instead of. I put this on. This was not a real good scramble, but he he keeps fighting, gets around on him. Yeah. You know, it doesn't stay with him. That's a good. But it was yeah. decent by the by the strong end. That's a good job by the running back out there. Yeah, like the technique. That's what we tell him. We tell him the crossover step. His job is to, to go until he loses contain. When he loses contain, he's going to cut. Yeah, he does your technique perfect. Yeah, exactly. He throws his arm. He throws his arm out front. You see it here too. When you're going to punch Sweeney again. Same deal. You know, he's trying to come out here. I got I got this one because this is a good scramble by him. He just sits on him and gets on him, and finally gets a little position on him, but it's ten yards downfield. You know? Yeah. But it's okay. I mean, we're, you know, he's that end is locked up with him. He's not making a tackle. Again, crossover step, and he's he's running outside till he loses contain, and uh, then he chops. So he didn't didn't get a good chop. Didn't cut the guy down, but but slowed him up enough and we're around him now. That's tough on a little linebacker. You watch him right there. He, oh yeah, he's got to read. Yeah, he's, he's got to read fullback dive. Yeah. He's got to run out and make the pitch. And he's, I mean, he stops totally. And yeah. Just to how good that kid is. He makes the tackle on the side of it. This is a play we put on late in the season, 235. Mm, I don't want to run it real quick. It's just fullback dive to the quick side. It's basically, oh, yeah. it's just lead, fullback lead quick, and tailback's leading up in the hole on this okay. linebacker. Yeah, I got you. And he's fanning out this five, and he's blocking down on the one. Right. 
Because people a lot of times against us won't put anybody in the backside of three because there's no need yeah. to. We won't, we're either running trap right back here or we're running power right here or an ISO right here. <clears throat> so they'll vacate this area. So I'll put this on the JV. Yeah, and, and, you know, again, our tailbacks aren't usually our better blocking back. Yeah. We just want them to get in the way. Yeah. Uh, we toyed with our, our linebacker, our stud linebacker. We put him back here, ran it with him. That's where we picked it up at. We just want him to get in the way long enough. Here's 10 yards. Mm -hmm. You know? It's a good scoop by the center on this play. It's a good scoop by the center. Gets into his yeah. chest and good kick out by the end. I think it's 235 again. Yeah. Boom. He could be cut it outside, he had a little more run room, but now you argue for nine yards. Good scramble by the end. I mean, he's already by position right there. He's just got to get his butt in the hole and kick him out by the uh, quick tackle. <coughs> See what I'm talking about? This is where we put, we'll put our linebacker back there and let him come hit him. A little more aggression there. He buries him. He'll bury this kid. We may, we may put that linebacker, that halfback, this year. This is, we base our trap here, ran a quick trap and based it. And bring up at this end, as you watch this tackle, it does a good job of just fanning out this end, or this uh, five. He, just, he scrambles his five really well. You know, and, and you're back here seeing this ball fake, and we're just running right here, right at him, right now. We didn't win them late in the games, like fourth and one, and we were going to run 234, and our kids going, no, our coach is from base. I think this is it. We had to get this first down and win the game, and we had breathing down our necks. This is from base, coach. Okay. And then we'll get 15 yards. The game got to be a pretty heated game between these two. Us yeah. And teams. Yeah, that was it. I mean, it wasn't, you know, it became that way. I mean, they're a big aggressive team, we're a big aggressive team, and it just kind of got a little physical, and it was allowed to get physical. It was a bad deal. Angle block, again, we're looking to get your head in front, hand on the backside, just shove him down. You know, and everybody's doing it. We'd like the defender to kind of slide, you know, try to take a step forward. Yeah. But <clears throat> we don't always get that. But these are going to be some other plays, but we've got some good block downs. We're going to get a block. We're running 3 2 eight right here. It's our strong side sweep. We're just getting blocked down, blocked down by these guys. We just take this that uh, that four comes inside. You now we usually want this tackle to get inside that four, but he steps down and this guy comes with him, so they just bury him down. Yeah. And we don't pick up the backer very well. We don't get the kick out, and he's in our face, but it happens. Same deal here. Three two eight. Block down. Block down. See the guard. Play side guard. Fifty six. <clears throat> He's up in the hole and out, and he just they get a big crushing block, but he kicks that kid out long enough to get by him. Inside out. Inside out. You should get your butt in the hole, turn out on. We get a good seal here too, if I remember right. Boom on that cat. Yeah. He was real good. That little guard was good at sealing. <coughs> Three to eight or half packs taught to go inside. You're picking up whatever comes off the backside of that strong end, he picks up. We want everybody going inside, 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 inside. And make like a big wall right here. He's kicking out with shows. So you got a real quick force. All right, there's enough crease. We go and seal inside. So boom, get the kick out. They'll get a good block on him like we want. He does a good job of making the play. But we get the good angle blocks. We get a good seal push down here. Everybody does a good job of sealing. We don't get a good good kick out on the sweep. We still get three yards. These guys are the best of anybody against us up front because they physically matched up well with us. Now they still a lot of people shift. We get down, get set. This doesn't affect us any when they do this because we're we're going to an area. Yeah. You know, we're not worried about that. When they slide like this, okay, fine. We can don't we don't have to worry about that. Now, like I said, the only one we audible is two thirty four. So if we see people that shift, we'll always go to 34 on two. That way they come up, they shift. We got time to adjust. But if they don't shift, we can go quick. 
Now these guys shift, no big deal. We're still running, we're running right here anyways. So you get the block down, kick out, eight yards. Don't get good blocks. We don't crush anybody. We're not getting anybody on the ground or anything, and it's just not it's not look clean, but we're getting eight yards. You know, we're, we're successful. Taylor. The ducks. Yeah, we see a lot of even fronts. I, mean, I don't know. We saw a split probably out of our nine just nine regular season games. We saw a split seven of the nine games. A split or a variation of the split. Yeah. The one these guys do the best job against us because they've played us for years. Yeah. <clears throat> and it's crazy. They stay in their base defense. They stay. They play threes. They play threes. They're gonna play threes. They're gonna play sevens. And their linebackers are going to be here. Their safeties are going to come up and crash, and they're going to stay. Come get us. When they won state, they had a, this is what, what killed us. We had a lead on them late in the game. This guy right here was in our mess kit every play we ran. Their free safety did a heck of a job when they won state. And of course, they had a good linebacker to go with this. This kid, the abuse kid, playing the all-star game for him. He did a good job against us too. And, they, and it's a big rivalry game between us. And they, they'll get after us. We'll get after them. We're going to beat these suckers one of these days. But Daria doesn't do a good job of blocking down here. He pops up, and this is early in the season. He wasn't. He, he got better as the year went along. He should just be caving this guy down. And if he stands up like that, let him go outside. Let the halfback take him. Now we now we can go inside and get him. I don't know. They got some kind of off shade four three, and they, they would move around. See, that's the thing about it. People get crazy against our offense because they. And they change up so much from they what they normally do. They try to do something totally crazy, and they make they take the aggressiveness out of their kids because their kids are so worried about where to line up and where to go. And you know, with us, it's just we're going to go get this, and we're going to go now. And, and that's the thing with Wimberley. They they line up in their base and just and just, just play technique, and you just whip the guy across from you. You know, I think they run. Well, they used to be straight wing T, and that may be the. They run gun, but they run wing team plays out of the gun. Yeah, no, and they do a heck of a job on their offense. They really do. Coach Nowell's does a heck of a job. See, again, a little clip back side of the guys. Okay. With the Bulldogs, burn Bulldogs, they do a good job. They'll do solid up in their split against us. Remember I said you get a 3-5-9? These guys will play 3-5-9 on us. They'll actually play like a 3-1. They'll give us a 3 and a 1 quick fives. And he'll be kind of a gap seven, and then he'll be, they'll be these guys on the ends. You know, they could do that against us and manhandle us up front. We're big this year. They're not. They're not as big. And we could we pushed them around. We ran 234 this game probably 20 times and just five yards of pop, just three, yeah. five yards of pop. And they, they couldn't man up with us up front. Now, they could stop our sweeps pretty well because they were pretty quick, but they couldn't defend that. You know, and this non-district for them, they see all the spread stuff, so they put a faster yeah. defense out there. <clears throat> so we're on a sweep, we get five yards, and you know, it's not bad, and we'll take it, you know. But it's not what we'd like to have. Get good block downs, good block downs. It doesn't stay on very long, but, but long enough for us to get by them. It's our G. I thought it was a repeat. Did y'all run, run any uh, midline? We toyed with putting it in. We didn't. No. We ran it a few years ago against um, Quero. We, we had a, a midline play. It was yeah. just no more than a quarterback to keep. You know. But you know, you saw what we do in practice, and everything we have is just so fast paced. We don't have a lot of time to teach and to do those things. You know, and, and and what we think with our kids is if you do too much, the kids are going to get confused. You know? <clears throat> so we only put on what our kids can handle. And you know, we did that in the playoffs. Where in the playoffs, we change up our practice a little bit. We'll have an hour and a half with our first offense, and then 30 minutes with our backups because we know we're going to play our ones the whole time. <clears throat> and as long as our backups get enough of bases, we're okay. Yeah. So. We will add on some trick things and do some trick things in the playoffs, but we don't don't we feel we just don't have time. There's only X amount our kids are going to remember because yeah. they got to learn offense and defense and go. So we don't toy with it. 
I know some people do run a midline out of this. And they run some speed stuff out of this, yeah. some jet sweep stuff. We we toyed with that too. We just couldn't get the timing down. Yeah, and it's tough out, out from under center. It's tough to run the jet sweep stuff. Yeah, it's what um, I've seen. it is. You know who runs it well though is uh, uh, Gregory Portland runs it pretty well, and Sam Marcus yeah. got to where they're running it pretty well too out of the, out of the jet sweep stuff. You got to kind of change the uh, formation. You'll cheat your fullback over a little bit to the, the quick side, and you, you're going to motion strong and quick. And you know, you can run a trap out of it. You can run the jet sweep. You can run it. There's a pass that comes off of it. And we had, we had toy with putting on. We couldn't ever get that that timing down, and it was just taking so much time to do that in practice. We just we scrapped it. I said, "How much are we going to do this in a game? Not very much. Well, let's don't mess with it. Then let's go to something else. Let's run what we run, and let's go." And our kids know and they expect it. They know we're going to run this play. Let's go get this play. Is our G stuff still? These guys are going to be pretty decent next year. Uh, China Springs? Yeah. All these guys here are juniors and sophomores playing for them against us. They have a couple seniors, but not too many. They're going to be pretty good. Of course, Cameron, Cameron's always good. Cameron's always good. Yeah. They, they've got good athletes. They've, they've got always good got good athletes. They've always got good coaches. And they do a great job. They really yeah, do. They do. And uh, they're going to be good again next year. They're going to be. They're going to be all right. And they're losing a real good athlete. Yeah. Uh, Scott. Right. But uh, these guys, I think, will be up and come. This is Rockdale. They ran a fifty on us. They would. They ran a 50 in every game we'd seen, and, and they watched our films, and they, they sure enough, came out with a split. Came out with a split, split solid. DC left. Did he? Yeah, he took the head job at Burton. Huh? Okay. Which that's an absolute crazy thing to do. Well, they just started football, Burton, didn't they? Burton's been there. I mean, they've had football. Oh, really? Yeah, but the TEA stepped in. And, oh, wow. Oh, yeah, because they have bad scores. And unbelievable athletes, though. Yeah. Unbelievable athletes, but all kinds of trouble. Yeah, crazy. I, just, I just saw that like a week ago. Yeah. Crazy. Wow, well, that's going to change up their defense a little bit. Yeah. Miller had been a split guy when he was at Bay City, but they ran a split at Bay City. Yeah. And that's why I thought they were going to run. We get filmed there, sure enough. Here we go. Salina. 10-1. Yep. There's 22 guys right there in five yards of ball. Yeah. It's the craziest thing. They do a heck, these guys do a heck of a job in what they do. And they get their kids to go. And this kid right here, he's a buck fifty. And and you watch films of people. Now he didn't hurt us very much, but against everybody else, he is in their backfield just killing people. He did a heck of a job. He did a good job. And of course this guy's a freshman. Jeez. They they're returning a lot. He, they're losing him, their nose. Um, one of their ends, I think this one, a little small one, and then one of the DBs, and that's it for this kid, they're this, this guy. And that's it. And they got everybody else coming back. Where did they go again? They have four. But, problem with the 10 1, it's like they talked about yesterday. If we can get past that front wall, yeah. they're done. They're gonna. Now, they, we didn't do, we didn't control the game as much as we'd like to against them. Yeah. They actually took it to us. And they controlled the game against us. But we knew if we could break that first line, so we don't get a good block down on this cat right here by our tackle. If he slides out, he becomes the seal right there. And here we go. There's nobody else there. And it's off to the races. And he gets caught. But right, we're on the ball on the nine yard line. First and ten, the first goal to nine. Yeah, linebackers just take themselves out. They, they're so tight. Yeah. You know, they get caught up in trash anyways. Yes. You know, and, and but against everybody else they did a good job. And they did a good job of some of the plays we ran against them because of where they were. Yeah. You know, it's just it's tough to get to them, especially on track. So you couldn't trap these guys yeah. at all. That's okay. We didn't have to. This is ugly. Yeah. Seventy one. <laughs> Seventy one. He does a heck of a job. He's his backside tackle. Watch him. He's still trying to play. He's like, okay, I'm going to go and just nail you right there. Yeah, the ref almost got a piece ref of that. Ref almost got a piece of that. Go get you some, right? This is deep as they play this. This was like, this was late in the game. They started backing them off a little bit, but not much. 
They run the numbers, do things from what I understand. Yeah. Um, we had a coach in that system before that ran the numbers, and it, it wasn't a true numbers, but they're running because they stayed in the one defense against Ed in every film that we had seen. You know, they're gonna, they stayed in nose and threes and just play games with everybody else. Yeah. And normally they, they go nose threes and they go to twos, ones, and they just shift around. They didn't do that so much. We didn't block the play side of five right there, but he, took, he became a seal guy, which is not what we want. We, we get a three five. It's one thing about eight hole, eight hole reverse. And this is what these are right now. If you get a three and a five, uh -huh. you got to block down, block down. With the, the strong side, yeah, because mm -hmm. it, it, you know, the the tackles rule on on, on eight hole is over in your linebacker unless I have a three. If I have a three, I got to block down. But if you have a three and a five, you have over and you have a, a block down situation. So you know he can't block two guys. So he's going to say down down. We tell him down down, and we're all coming down inside and blocking it, walling it all off. So it becomes like three two eight. Yeah. And you know, if you get a three, five, and nine, then that nine is a kick out. It's a real fast kick out, but it's a kick out. Yeah. <clears throat> a holes a play that will mess with people because you're getting trap fake, backside sweep fake, and then here comes the the tailback on yeah. the strong side sweep. So it's it's the toughest one to defend. <clears throat> This is 349, or quick side sweep. Again, these guys, this is what they do. Well, they tackled well, too. They, every one of them tackled real well. We were in this out of Paul, out of y'all stuff that Paul did. He, he would run that, the halfback would be a blocker on the play side. That's how we ran. A-hole? Yeah, a-hole reverse. Oh, so you get trap fake and then did yeah, that's how he did it. He didn't do the yeah, and I, and I know some, slot line. And I know some people that will, will take the fullback and have him as an extra blocker yeah. on the eight hole. Yeah. So you get fullback. He won't even dive. He won't even trap that. He'll just banana out and go yeah. kick out. I, you know, to me, I think you get the because you yeah people have to respect the trap. Yeah. So I think you need the trap fake, and I think you need the three forty nine fake. I think you need the quick side sweep fake because. It, it freezes those linebackers just to counter to before they can they can come in and make the a play. The way he did that was the quarterback would step downhill. He would fake the a hole uh -huh. and then step downhill to the right. tight end. That was his backside fake. Okay. Well, he we do that, and we'll keep we'll we'll do we'll run a hole, but we'll still keep it. Yeah. And we'll have the quarterback still come around here, and that's he'll he'll we'll watch that in the box yeah. and say, are they looking at quarterback on a hole? No. All right, let's keep it then. Let's run eight-hole keep. This three forty-nine here. It's a good job by the swing man. Like I said, you know, I told you, coach, our swing men are, yeah. are usually our. This is a this is a kid. He's probably about one hundred and sixty pounds. Yeah. And and he's got a little strength to him, but he wasn't he wasn't real fast. What did had decent hands when we actually threw him the ball. But and what he does, he's just got to get into this guy and just hold him right here. You know, this guy, he's supposed to come down flat at this angle and pick up his linebacker. He probably didn't get to him. You know, he just kind of nut blocks at five. But it's long enough for us to get around him and go. <coughs> We're getting this long enough to hold that wall, yeah. and here we go. And this tackle, we're in the end zone. Um, these are all the different traps that we were on. First one's real fast. Catch it. I haven't got the DSV figured out yet. <coughs> yeah, we love double ones. We'll trap double ones. Because you're you're there. Again, double ones, it's just like the 10 1. If, if you clear that first level, there's nobody else there. You're getting to the free safety now. But, you know, this is a 50 front. We're running strong side traps. We're going to trap this guy right here. Actually, we'll just attack the trap. My fault. 
it's our this is the this is comp this is 233 tackle trap. That complements our dive here. So he's getting a jab pick and he's going. Tackles the pass should be over the ball and he's going to attack that inside shoulder. He's blocking up with his linebacker. He's taking the nose and, and he should be coming. He's uncovered, so he should be comboing up to this one. And he's taking the backer right now. Fullback's job is to fill for that tackle. He's got to pick up whatever shows. Maybe she like that guy should have thrown down there. His job is four to five. He's gonna wall off the safety if he's there. He's gonna wall off the safety if he comes. If he doesn't, he's gonna go up like that corner. Nobody's there. He should have gone and got the corner right now. Against a split, this guard's gonna influence now. He's gonna kick out this guy. He's going to hold that tackle just long enough for input. So it looks like sweep to this guy. He's coming flat. Should be coming high off that guy's butt and pick up that linebacker. Then you get a real block on him, but he holds him up long enough for us to get past him. Same thing. I'll put this one on. We, gotta, we actually get the linebacker this time. He fills the hole, but look at our path of our tackle. I mean, he's swimming right around. He's swimming right around that that five, that three right here to pick up that linebacker. That's a heck of a block job by him. So you like that big big kid to be on the ground with you know. Yeah. Yeah. There's Salina Cushman. Hey, they got enough in the box. No, Cody. We're in we call it double. We'll take this our receiver out here. We'll line him out here on the line. So all they do is they take one guy, walk him out, man up. Everybody else is here. And they're gonna stay like this. Is what they do. You go spread, coach, this is what they're gonna be in. The only thing they'll do is they'll take a free safety walk into about eight yards. That's as wide as they get. And they want to get pressure on you right now. They did a good job of it. See, our tackle didn't get a very good trap here. You know, we, we should be, by rule, we should be trapping this guy. But our tackle, he gets, hits the ground. Tackle sees him on the ground, knows he's not going to make a play. He should have turned up and blocked this safety and made it a real, blocked this safety right here, made it a real clean play. And he gets, fumbles around. I mean, we might have got, you know, another 10 yards out of the deal if he had walled it off. But we see if he's on the ground flop, we'll just leave him alone. Turn up and go. He should have turned up and blocked that cat. He's leaning around. We'll get a good job on linebacker, but we hold him up long enough to get past him. That's, again, we preach him finishing our blocks and, and getting on him. We're like I said, we probably ripped that kid in film, but really he does a decent job. Gets on him long enough to us to get past him. You know, he technically did his job, but he didn't do it the way we needed it, so we probably got on him for doing that in practice in film. Do you have one play that's just your bread and butter? Yeah, 234. It's our base dodge play. You, know, you showed that earlier to him. Fourth and one, we're going to run 234. So we don't pick a linebacker here because he takes it. He, this is early in the season when we played the Texans. This tackle, he, he was bubbling around that tackle. He'd run bubbling around that five. You watch his path, he'll step up field, and they come around. So what's that thing about how they're young kids so they want to run around that guy? You go through him. He's going to leave, go through him. We really have to preach that to him. And even at the lower levels, we have to go through and show him how to do those things. But they want to run around that guy because they think he's still going to be there. He won't. And I promise you he won't. See, so bubbles a little bit there, but he's going. This play, Coach Fitz, complements our power. But we're faking power to our fullback, our, our bread and butter play right here. Right. So it freezes the linebacker just to count, or at least gets a little flow. Now we're going to come back with a track coming the other way. How many yards to rep? Yeah, it's over 6,000 yards last year, Russian. This year? Yes. 
two, three years ago, we played in the same age, got beat by Jasper. We, we were top five all time in the nation. We had 7,300 yards rushing. We had 8,400, 8, 8,300 yards of offense and 73 of them were rushing. Yeah, that was when you had three, the three guys. Yeah, we had three backs, all of them went over 2,000 yards. All over 2,000 yards rushing. Yeah. Uh, this year we had two backs over 2,000. And our fullback, our fullback had right at 2,000. He had right at 2,000. He had 2,300. And this back had like 1,500, 1,600. Our quarterback had another 800, 900. If we would played one more game, he might have got 1,000. So we'd have four backs again over for that 1,000. Keeps them all happy, doesn't it? It keeps them all happy. And it makes people have to defend three to four people. They can't just key on one guy. And of course, you know, we, we had maybe 800 yards passing this year, but if that much, it's more like 500 probably. <clears throat> but like I said, we had 22 punts all year. Our punter, you know, dad wanted to get him a college scholarship. And really, he had a good enough leg to get his college scholarship, but, you know, you, we put together all his punts on film, we had 22 of them. You know, we're going to go for it. Fourth and one, we're going to go for it. Fourth and three, we'll go for it in the middle of the field. But we, we believe, our kids believe in our system well enough, we're going to get three yards first down. This is our strong side track, 332. How wide are your splits? We, we preach two, 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 three. Okay, I, I, not, I noticed the he's strong at, end was... He's at six. And he's six foot. Yeah. So because we have a slot, but we, we we preach two, two, three, but like everything else, they start getting whittled down inside. Yeah, because they, they always love and they feel it. They feel right. more secure. Yeah, they, they feel more secure. You know, because linemen don't play well in space, and they don't want to be out there by themselves. Yes. So they want to kind of whittle inside. But we preach two, two, three. Now we started the season at uh, two, three, four. We got to try to get three foot with a tackle, uh -huh. and and. And we'll play games every once in a while if we say, okay, if he's lined up on you, widen out a little bit and make the hole bigger. Right. But we like two foot splits by the interior guys and then three foot by the, the tight end and, the, and then six by the swing man. This tackle should be taking a path on that linebacker. They get a big piece of him that gets him long enough for us to get by him. Like I said, everything's so fast hitting, we, we don't need a big crushing block on people just long enough to get past them. To irritate them long enough for us to get running past them, and here we go. So 50 front, we should be trapping this kid here. Can you run that back to the beginning? Sure. <clears throat> you were talking about a V with the, your line, weren't you? Yeah. Earlier. I don't... Is this? No, 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 no. Okay. We get in trouble if we have a V. Okay. All right. Because that's well, we straight want, as an arrow to me. Yeah, we want right. this. We okay. want this right here. We're real tight to the ball. We want this right here. And I was telling these guys earlier, we're, there's times that we'll get on a defender before he get, takes a step out of his stance. We preach when the snap count, get on them before they get out of their stance. We preach that, and we want that. So we're going to be tight to the ball. We're going to be in, this is good alignment. You know? If we sometimes we get this this tackle and this end kind of feed back a little bit, then we'll get in trouble for that. We want this right here. Okay. This is this is gives me good alignment right there. I'll put this one in our tackle. He he does a good job of just staying on him. He gets inside the four and just stays on that backer and just keeps shoving him, keeps shoving him, keeps shoving him. And it irritates kids that for a while. They don't want to. You know, they're more worried about the guy coming to push me than worried about making the play. So the tackle taking that path inside. Now he knows he's picking up this linebacker. But he's going to take his first step here, then he's going to readjust. Double ones. We're going to trap this guy here. Now he, he's more of a nose. We'll block him. We'll trap the next. <clears throat> we trapped him there. And it's vacated. We just did a good job of the backside. Backside three makes a play there. This kid here makes a play. We can get underneath him. See how the tackle we're in around him on the backside? He needs to come underneath that guy. 
the best he can. This is our 333. Quick side trap. He should take him past here, blocking 30. He gets on him. Here we go. The receiver. Yeah, the receiver. You'll see tackles come down and throw too. This kid, that big kid, didn't get on the ground very much. We're going to emphasize that a little bit more this year. So we, we had double ones there, but that one was more of a shade nose. So we went ahead and blocked him. So we went ahead and blocked this cat here with the guard. Come up that linebacker. See how that kid down here is getting on the ground? The backside tackle on the ground. That was a little illegal, but like I said, it makes that other kid think about it for a while. That's the tailback. After he his ball fake. It's number five, who's ball fake coming around, watch him. He's coming down here and he's going to throw on the ground. He's going to find somebody to go hit. Just unself. Yeah. Unself. What? Are we eating in or I don't think I eat until one. Oh, until one. Oh, okay. It's just 333. Yeah, it's still 333. Yeah. And you can tell because we're running wrong quick. We're running around some of the ball snap. So it's a good job by the linebacker here of getting on the, on the quick tap of getting on that linebacker. <coughs> you know, just making a play is this strong safety sitting out here, or he's a corner, I guess. This guy right here on the line of scrimmage is making a play yeah. because he, he got the tackle already. I mean, you know, we're getting five yards and he's yeah. making a play. This is 422. I put this one on. This is our tackle trap to the strong side. This is what I love about this play because we can run this. We run, we line up in this I formation. We run a couple different plays, yeah. but we really like to run this ISO coming right here. ISO weak. ISO to the weak side. So people know we line up in this set. We're going to run over here mostly. So here we come with the tackle trap coming back side. Now we can run eight hole out of this formation. We still run 3 3 3 out of this formation, so we can still run some other stuff out of this. We still run passes and stuff off this too, but mostly we're going to run this ISO coming right here. So here comes a tackle trap coming the other way. And, and the end zone is really good because you get lost. I mean, he gets lost in there. The free safety doesn't have a clue about that. Oh, he doesn't have a clue. He doesn't have a clue. Not at all. Not at all. I said, you watch the end zone, he gets lost in the trash. They had no clue. It's, it's wiped out in the trash, and that's, that's the biggest thing about it. <clears throat> this is, we want to play the pops, we'll call this one. This is good because he runs around, that yeah. safety's that corner, linebackers in over. He reads the play, but yeah. he runs a complete circle around that kid. This kid right here, he reads it. See so is that the is that the G? Is that what y'all faking to the we're faking side? ice weak side ISO. ISO. Okay. Weak side ISO. We call it full forty seven, which is we line up in the eye. Now here we we, we line we run four twenty two out of either formation, but if we were in the eye, we're in four forty seven, we're gonna get a double team out of these two guys. He's gonna you know influence this cat, he's gonna come down and get this linebacker. And fullback is coming to kick out whoever's there. So it's like a weak side power, I guess. Yeah. And then we're running the ISO right there. So if, you know, we're in the eye, we're going to do that. Well, you know, here we are running 422 the other direction. You know, strong hand's got four to five. He should check four a little better than what he did. He didn't block four very well. He went and got the corner number five. What's the power play to, to the weak side? 457? 447. 447. 447. 447. So 
So we are at trips, with funky formation. See, people see us in trips, they start getting crazy because, you know, we don't ever run trips. But we run trips. We can run spray on this way, we can run track, we can still run, we have a little fullback power we can run here. We don't run it very often, but we can run it here. We can run eight hole, going back the other way. This the sweep going the other way, or we can run four twenty two coming back. And we run four twenty two. Center picks up the mic. There we go. The thing I love about this offense is we rarely have a negative yard play. Yeah. We may have a one yard gain, we may have a two yard gain. We're not it's not second and in eleven or second and twelve. Okay. Now it can be second and five if we jump or if we hold or something, but we don't ever we don't ever start with a negative play. We'll always start with a positive. Everything's positive when we do. More sweeps, like some of these repeated. And I got some other plays at the end too. This is eight hole again. I got the two twenty eights on this. Oh, this is a key. Oh, this is a 318 run. We'll call 318 run. We don't call if we got a fast quarterback, we'll call it a lot. We don't call it very often. What this is, is everybody backs are running. Backs are running 349. They're running the, the weak side sweep or the quick side sweep. Yeah. The line's running eight hole reverse. And we call it 318 run. So the fullback, he's got he can't get in the way. He's cheating up. He's cheating up and he is and going fast right now. Yeah. Now against a three, we'd like to get him inside that A gap. He's got quick side, he's got strong side A gap. Yeah. But if, it, if it's cloudy, we told him if it's cloudy, you can scrape off. You can scrape off and come and pick up that linebacker. But we want him. We want that linebacker to respect that trap so much that he's he's got to be there. Now I think we get called back with the holding is you know, whatever. It's because their hands get extended and we don't do a good job with it. But you know it happens. It's three to eight again. So the same same thing on the. The fullback too. He's getting in between the guards. Mm -hmm. See right here, he should be on three two eight. He is faking the, the faking the strong side trap three thirty two, which he his his rule on that is quick side a gap, and then he's going to run the S and the trap. Mm -hmm. Well, if we're not trapping, he's got quick side a gap period. So he should get his butt right here. Now he may come off the guard's tail in this, but an eight hole, he's got to get in front of that guard. He's got a strong side A gap because he's taking the quick side, the trap. So he's he's diving, he's diving to the strong side. He better go in a hurry. He better beat that guard. Square up. They've got a little bit of athleticism. They've got a little bit of athleticism. Yeah. And speed. Well. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, they. I talked to a coach down there. They said their JV is probably their second best team in their district. <laughs> I wouldn't. I would not believe it. I would not doubt it. I watched Gonzalez on film this year. They probably were. Gonzalez got second in their district, and I'll tell you what, because Carl's JV is better than them. Three to eight. Again, we just kind of wall them off and go. You know, if you get teams that that. Like the, like the um, they like to run a lot of solid, or they slant, mm -hmm. or they shift, and you don't know where they're going to be. You'll run three two eight. It's a safer play, or three forty nine, because it's you're going to the area. Then the only time we really man up is at eight down the eight hole, yeah. and that's you know. Down. 
Those are backups. We don't get a very good block down by the strong end here. We don't get a good block by that guy. We still get enough to get around and go. So our end just tries to position step instead of going flat and taking a good angle. He tries to poke him. So he needs to block that guy down and go. There's some athletes in Taylor too, by the way. Yeah, there is. There. Our district track, we were telling you, we probably had, yeah, so. I'm not trying to brag, we probably had some of the better times overall in the uh -huh. state of Texas as a, as a collective group. Taylor's always got, they got at least one kid named Woolrich. Yes, who's, who's who can fly. Yeah, every year. Well, Coach, we got, we got the two-time 100-meter champion in our district. What do you run? Huh? What do you run? Neil. He jogged the last 50 meters and he ran 10-6. <laughs> 10, 6, 8, 1 arcs, 1 arcs, yeah. 10, 7, 2, 10, 7 was second, 10, 7, 4 was third, 10, 8 was fifth, was fourth. Yeah. Our district triple jump, yeah. 43, 4 was sixth place. Curling from Hutto jumps 47, yeah. 2, his first jump and it sits out the rest. Yeah. And just a half pass. Coach, I, had a, I, had a I had a jumper the last two years just like that mm -hmm. at Thorndale. Yeah. I mean, two years ago, Coach, you know, won a top four out of the district, go to the next one in the area. Right. Kid jumped 22 3 and got fifth place <laughs> at a 1 A meet. You know? <laughs> I mean, because my kid had his best day ever. I mean, he jumped 24 2. Yeah. And just got way out there. But yeah. <laughs> Sometimes yeah, so when it just came to Thorndale, they're pretty tough. Yeah, I mean, I, but I'd say our I'd say our district overall is a group oh, yeah. matchup with anybody else. Oh yeah. That's now I know there's better times. Yeah. You know, the kid there, and then the kid from uh, getting to ten yeah. two or so ten three. Yeah. You know, 21, 21 three, 200. You know, we. Yeah. But as a group, as an overall group, we we we're pretty good. Yeah, he ran. Well, that was a ten six fat, so wow. Wow. Um, so that's not hand time. No, hand time would be more like ten four. Yeah. So, wow. Yeah. He's and they were in a three twenty they were in a three twenty mile relay. Did they jog the last hundred meters? Uh, there Who's the team's this? This is uh Madison, Dallas Madison. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Because they <laughs> they got a chance because they ran a forty one ninety six sprint. Yeah. And four twenty-seven eight. The only thing's going to get them is uh, is Region Four Quero. Yeah, that's, that's the it. one that's that's who they're going to be against. Because because there's you know, nobody else in Region Four. Uh -huh. They moved they moved us. I'm not going to say we're a speedster in track. They moved us out, and they moved that uh, Wharton Columbia Sweeney uh -huh. district yeah. out, and they have speed. Yeah. So there's nobody in that region that has speed except for Quero. Region four two A's gonna be pretty pretty tough. That'd be pretty salty. You see the Hearn Hearn uh Hempstead, Lexington District. Oh, it's Lexington's Lexington. down. They're not running. But a forty one oh seven wow. spur relay. Wow. And there's a forty nine triple jump. Get from Hearn to forty nine triple jump. Wow. Sorry that fast forward some of these, you've seen some of these. Yeah, our track district pretty decent. And it's good. good Yours is good. I mean, we, we, ran, we ran 330, 331 mile relay at a 2 AB, and we got fourth. I'm going to tell you, our mile relay in our district was bad, but that's because yeah. people just don't run mile relay. And that's the thing with, at our level, with the, them coming into the 800 meter run, 800 meter relay, mm -hmm. all those sprinter kids, they don't want to run anymore. Yeah. I mean, we ran 332, 333, got yeah. second. Cuero, or, or uh, Cameron Yard ran 334, yeah. and they got third. So and, and we ran 331, they got fourth. Yeah, Rosebud ran 325. So, uh, yeah, we Taylor ran a three, but whatever. This is 230, no, this is a eight hole. So I'm going to go 
one set thing I'll say about the meal kid. At district was the first time he ran the hundred all year. He ran the open quarter. Wow. And he ran a forty six something open quarter. Jeez. Um, wow. That was Fine. a real. Yeah, Matt hasn't got a little speed. I was I was mildly surprised at how bad Salina beat them. I thought Salina would win. You know, I hadn't seen Salina on film. Yeah. But I knew Madison had speed and had athleticism. Yeah. Because they, they didn't have a quarterback. Really? Yeah. They had that kid, he loves for the first half, and then he starts running hard. And we held him to, I think it's 35, 40 yards rushing in the first half, and then he had 200 in the second. Wow. Second half. Wow. But he, he loves, in the first half, he kind of, you know, low home. And then the second half, he turns it on. Yeah. These are all our eight holes where we get big yardage. Big yardage, you know. He just gets lost. <clears throat> we got to replace this guy. This is going to be tough. We have a kid. The Bodie kid, right? Yeah, the Bodie kid. He's playing the All-Star game. He's our All-Star. Yeah. He's got the speed. Yeah. Where's he going? Uh, I mean, no one signed him. See, he's gonna he can try to walk on at AM. Dad was an Aggie, and he wants to go be an Aggie, and yeah. he's gonna try to walk on at AM. Go be a special team guy. Yeah. Yeah. Scout team guy. Yeah. yeah, and he could do that. He returned kicks for us, and yeah, and uh, he does a good job with it. I mean, he's he came to us. He wasn't real strong, and he you know he's got his strength up, and he's got his speed up. I mean, he runs yeah. he runs pretty well. You know, and nobody's picking him up. That's kind of, I mean, he's not the prototypical running back, and he didn't, we don't throw the ball enough for him to be a receiver. Yeah. Right. So there's the eight hole out of the, out of the, out of the eye. Out of the eye yeah. I mean, is any, what are y'all faking here? Are you faking? We're faking. So? <laughs> well, kind of. Kind of. <clears throat> we keep the rules the same for the backs, because we don't want to jingle with them too much. So we're, we're telling the, the halfback, you still come up here and run like you're running 349, like you're running the quick side yeah. sweep. So we, we tell him he needs to be here in front of the tailback. Yeah. So he cheats up a little bit and he runs. And fullback's still faking his trap. Yeah. So we're still faking everything else. Nothing changes for anybody else. We're just lining out differently. So it looks like ISO just a little bit, you know? All right. Thank you, sir. You don't have a copy of this film, do you? I can get you one. <coughs> Would you like one to take home now? No. I mean, I have a video. I brought one with me. I did not yeah. brought those just because. Whenever, whenever you get the chance or whatever. I, I, I like a video. Come. No problem. Just, uh, you have my email address on there? Yeah. Just, e just email me your address okay. and I'll try to send you one. Okay. I'll just have to get a hold of you because you probably live about 10 minutes from me, so. Yeah, exactly. Right, just, you have, like I said, email me your address and I'll try to shoot you and let you know when you can get one. Well, it's not that far, I'll drive, I'll drive over there and get one. <laughs> yeah. At the end of this, I put on, uh, so I'll try and get to the end of the tape. There's a question I have. Of, of any of the defenses, which one seems to give y'all the most trouble? What, what, well, what is the one thing that, that seems this to one. give y'all trouble? Just the <laughs> 11 in the box and. Yeah. No, but, um, yeah, right. I, you know, every defense, Take something away, but it gives open something open else something up. up yeah. You just got to know what to do. You just got to kind of look and feel for right. what you do, and um, that's what we do on Sundays when we're mapping all the stuff out. We'll get about ten different defenses we think that we're going to see, and uh, we'll just start mapping that stuff yeah. out and say, okay, we can get this, we're going to this, we don't, we're going to get this, we're going to run this, and, and you know, we're going to run our. We got about ten plays, and we're going to run no matter what. I mean, yeah. high water, we're yeah. going to run those ten plays, and. 
We'll find a way to make those work somehow. There's more water over there, guys. Can you hang in the drink right over that cooler? I appreciate it. I didn't mean to interrupt. I apologize. Hey, if you guys need anything, let us know. All right. Thank you. And, uh, you know, if, if people try to take away the traps and the sweeps may open up, or the power opens yeah, up. Yeah, something that be. Something's going to open up somewhere. And, and that's what we do early on. We try to get a feel for where you are. Right. Where they're going to be, where they go, and then what are you trying to stop? What what did yeah you know, yeah what are they trying to stop? What slow are they down? trying to stop? And right, where are they going out? You know, I mean, what are they giving the majority of the time? Because yeah. most people, some people try to vary fronts and play to play against us, and, and we'll try to figure out okay yeah. where are they get what are they trying to slow down? You know, and ROC sometimes of course gets a little edited, 